Care Act. <clears throat> like most uh, local health care providers, Methodist is severely impacted by the size of the uninsured po population in Texas, which represents about a quarter of the population you've already heard. If we're honest, this represents something of a health care crisis for the families, for the local health care providers like Methodist and for state government, both state and local. Lack of insurance does not mean that the uninsured aren't getting health care. It isn't as simple. Many do receive health care in a terribly inefficient and expensive process that ineffectively distributes the burden through the health care system, through insurance, uh, infecting the costs that we all pay, or to local taxpayers uh, through higher county and hospital district property taxes. Methodist and Texas Impact wanted to know if the ACA, for all its widely discussed and controversial aspects, offered a comparative advantage to the current system. In this regard, Methodists simply didn't know the answer, and unfortunately, the analysis that had been done to that point didn't offer much confidence since prior to this session, uh, the state has been skeptical of the expansion of Medicaid, and little analysis had at least been made public. Much, much of it may have gone on, but it certainly wasn't available to my clients. In approaching our task, we decided to look at the issue as a business proposition for the state, its local governments, and the healthcare community. What I have learned in many years of working for this body is that policy analysis should be presented to you with the facts, uh, which is what we have tried to do. The final decision, obviously, is yours. In our analysis, we weren't interested in whether the Affordable Care Act makes sense as federal policy, nor did it, whether it made sense as political philosophy. It is federal law. Uh, it has been tested in the United States Supreme Court, and Texans will pay more in taxes and fees to cover its costs, regardless of what this body does. We also have the highest number of uninsured of any state in the country. So our questions were, what will be the impact on the state? What will be the impact on local governments? What will be the impact on providers? And what will be the impact uh, on the uninsured population of Texas? And then we also looked at secondary economic impacts, which I'm not going to talk about. This is what we found. Um, obviously, we know that this will increase uh, the level of uh, of people who are uh, eligible for Medicaid, and that's already been discussed uh, extensively. The net effect is that the federal government, under our estimates, uh, which are, you know, once again, if we get down and look in the nitty-gritty, fairly consistent, I think, with the LBB and the Health and Human Service Commission, uh, the federal government would pay about $100 billion more uh, toward the expansion of Medicaid in Texas alone over the next decade, including, refund the, including funding for adults, uh, for children, and provide a rate increase. So that's why our number is a little bit higher. We looked at the total impact of all of the changes that would be occurring um, uh, beginning in 2014. Uh, and also included the primary care provider rate increase and actually assumed that that would be extended and looked at the cost of that to Texas as well. Uh, the state would be responsible under this set of estimates about $15 billion over that period. So the state, um, as uh, Mr. Turner has pointed out, uh, does fairly well financially under this set of assumptions. In relation to the state costs, we examined how much has already been spent at the state and local level on health care for these individuals. And I think this is a real contribution that we made because we actually went through and looked at what was happening at the local level as well as at the state. Counties and hospital districts already spend about $2.5 billion in local taxes annually on indigent care, inpatient hospital care for jailed individuals, charity care, and some uh, of which the expansion uh, under ACA will relieve. Local hospitals, like those managed by Methodist, 
shoulder an additional $1.8 billion under our estimates annually in unreimbursed charity costs, bringing the total local burden under the current system to $4.3 billion a year. So when we talk about the interest stakeholders in having this issue, I think you can understand where it's coming from. The state also spends general revenue for health care and the ACA provisions. We identified some of the programs that would be affected by this change in our initial report, and since our report came out, we have been examining them and have developed preliminary estimates of the general revenue availability in these programs that would occur if the state opted to expand the Medicaid program. And these are programs that serve the affected populations, uh, and those populations would be reduced below the LAR request for the agency by the fact that these people would now be covered by Medicaid. So if you assume the LAR requests as a base, uh, we looked at, at that shift. We have conservatively estimated that more than $1.2 billion would be available in the current biennium uh, if Texas expanded Medicaid for adults. And the, the shifting occurred in these programs. And we have a, a detailed listing of those uh, which uh, will be available. And obviously we recognize that we're not the final fiscal authority, but it was a useful exercise. The GR savings in this biennium is especially valuable because it exists within the current spending limits, or at least it should. These funds could be used to finance the approximately $300 million in administrative costs for the adult expansion in the next biennium that we estimated. This is comparable to the $50 million that the LBB estimated, and I am proud to say we're more conservative because that's usually a problem for private estimators. Uh, or they could stay in the program the current programs and provide additional services, uh, the money that could be saved could be used to pay for the expansion. It could stay in the program or it could be used for other general revenue purposes as so far as we can tell under current state fiscal rules. The important bottom line is that there appears to be enough state and local funding already going to the current health care system to largely pay for all the state costs for the decade uh, that we estimated and still be able to ensure an additional 1 million adults, uh, Texans, by 2016 in the bargain. Uh, members. I know this is a controversial issue and there are important policy issues that you have to determine, but I don't really think you're going to see a more overwhelming fiscal uh, opportunity uh, during your service here. I, I've served this, this legislature for 30 years and I've never seen anything like it.